sitting at the top right now, sitting at 6-0 in the top 25 polls. You know, I want to ask you, what's been the biggest key, though, to the success for you so far this season after having success at SMU? Well, a big thing is we got good players here at TCU. You know, we're, we got guys that are playing at a high level. I think we have an elite uh, wide receiver uh, in, in Quentin Johnston. I think he's he's a guy. You see him catching the ball right there. He's a guy that's that's really provided a spark for us the last two weeks. You know, our guys are just playing good. The quarterback's really been playing good. Max Duggan, um, Kendra Miller, our running back, is a, is a good player, and we've been playing really good. Uh, defense. We're getting better every single week. Guys are getting more comfortable in our system defensively. And, you know, we're playing hard. We've been playing winning football so far. And, you know, the guys had a great attitude and they, they love to compete. They love to play and they love to practice. So it's been a fun team to coach. You know, and, and I know coaches don't like to answer these type of questions, but I got to ask, you know, you know, what will it take for you, though, to get to that ultimate goal of being in the college football playoffs outside of just continuing to win one game at a time? Yeah, I mean, you look around the Big 12, man, there's a ton of parity in this league right now. I mean, there's a bunch of good football teams. I think anybody can beat anybody on any given Saturday. So you just got to go out and you got to play at a very, very high level. Um, you know, you've got you've to you know, do a good job of, of winning the turnover margin. That's going to be big for us week in, week out. You know, you got to be really solid on special teams. That's going to be very, very important for us. And then the thing that we've done this year is is we've been able to generate a lot of big plays offensively, and we've done a pretty good job of limiting big plays defensively. And so that's going to be really important for us moving forward, just doing those things. And then, you know, we're going to have to go on the road and win some tough ball games. We'll, we'll have our hands full against a really good Kansas State team uh, Saturday night. Uh, those guys are, are really good. They know how to win. They play they play a physical, uh, tough style of football. So we'll have to play really well Saturday. Sonny Dykes, TCU head coach. They are 6-0. and They're eighth in the AP Top 25 poll. Coach, how much will Texas and Oklahoma leaving the Big 12 have an effect on the conference, do you think? How, how, let me ask, how will, how, what kind of an effect do you think it will have on TCU? Yeah, you know, I think that was, that was obviously a concern, I think, for all of us, was, you know, Texas and Oklahoma leaving. You know, Oklahoma's had a pretty good uh, run here in the Big 12 as far as winning conference championships and getting in the college football playoff. But if you look around the league right now, I mean, there's a ton of parity. There's a lot of really good football teams. And I think the Big 12 is probably as strong as it's ever been from top to bottom. And fortunately, the timing of that uh, coincides with Oklahoma and Texas leaving here in two years. And so it's going to be important for all the programs in the league to continue to invest um, and, and, you know, make, make sure that they play a winning brand of football. Um, that's going to be really, really important. And again, that's, the, the parity is what makes this league so tough. And so it's never good to lose two big brands like those two, but we're adding four teams that I think are going to be really good. I think that the, the quality of play in the Big 12 right now is, is really strong, and I think it's going to continue to get stronger. Sonny, as, as conferences continue to realign themselves and poach other teams from any conference, and I know you guys are adding somebody, but do you envision at all that maybe TCU – possibly could be looking around maybe there's a Pac-12 conference that would like to add a TCU that that could be a possibility in the future you know I think I think it hit one time not too long ago I think everybody was looking around I think the great thing about the Big 12 right now is I really do feel like that we believe we're in a position of strength I think that you know right now we're negotiating our TV deals which I think is going to be very very important to our future is is um, you know finding some strong television partners and getting those guys invested in the big 12. And so I think right now, I mean, the big 12 feels really, really good about our future. I think we're excited about the opportunities. I think we're excited about the teams we're, we're bringing in. And I think we feel like we're, we're going to be as strong as we've ever been, honestly. Sonny Dykes, TCU head coach, who's guide to TCU Horn Frost, a six and zero number and rank, Eighth in the AP Top 25 is joining us this morning on Keyshawn Johnson, and Jay Will, and Max Kellerman. You got your last name in the show now. It's pretty good. Well, I just didn't want to say Keyshawn. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that, you know, Everyone knows. Keyshawn Johnson. Well, there are a lot of Keyshawns since uh, there were no Keyshawns before you. There are lots of Keyshawns now. And, they're, and not all mine, so trust me. Um, <laughs> Coach Dykes, so when you look at the recruiting landscape across the country right now, how has the NIL situation affected you at TCU or helped you at TCU for that matter? 
Yeah, I think, you know, the, the interesting thing about the stuff that's happened <clears throat> between the transfer portal and NIL is they both pretty much occurred at the same time. And so, you know, the transfer portal itself, I think, is great for college football. I think it's good for student athletes. I've, I've always believed that guys ought to be able to go where they want to go to school and they shouldn't be locked in. Uh, it, it creates some chaos and it creates a, some some uncomfortable things for coaches, but I think it's the best thing for kids in a lot of ways. Obviously, NIL is the same thing. I mean, it's it's uh, you, you're having conversations now with people that you never thought you would have about uh, about opportunities outside of football to earn income. Um, and, you know, same thing. I mean, I think that's long overdue. I think it's something that um, the NCAA, in my opinion, should have dealt with many years ago. You know, you had these institutions making a lot of money uh, and these student athletes, you know, oftentimes weren't uh, getting a share of that. And so I, I think the system's are good. I think the two of them together at the same time have created a little bit of chaos in college football, quite frankly. And so I think, you know, what you, you worry about people poaching your players, you know, we had some good players at TCU that they got some good NIL opportunities at other schools and, and, and left TCU to go to those schools, but we were able to hold on to a lot of our guys here. We're fortunate. We've got a great donor base. We're in DFW. We've got a lot of um, possibilities for student athletes when it comes to name, image, and likeness just because of the, the the strong corporate presence in Dallas-Fort Worth. And so I think we're in a great situation right now to, to be able to retain our players. I think it certainly helps in recruiting to be in DFW, where guys see that there are very successful businesses that want to link that business to these uh, student-athletes, and there's lots of opportunities to do that. So I think we're in a really good position. I think we're very fortunate, again, to be in a, in a, in a city that's a booming uh, economy right now and, and growing fast and and giving our players lots of opportunities to to get involved in NIL opportunities. Coach, before I let you go, Key has these seven-on-seven seven teams, and, and <laughs> everybody in the world, it's like six degrees of separation. He had everyone. Like Thomas Jefferson was on one of the seven-on-seven <laughs> seven teams. No matter who you mentioned, oh, he played on my seven-on-seven seven team. How much did he yeah. help you recruiting with his seven-on-seven seven team at Cal? Like, you know, and he's bringing these guys through. A lot. Yeah, I know a lot. He was, I mean, to me, Keyshawn was kind of ahead of the curve when it came to that stuff. I mean, he got out. He got his players on those seven on seven teams exposure. A lot of those guys probably owe him a thank you for getting them a scholarship and a chance to play college football someplace. And so, mm. you know, a lot of people have copied that model, Keyshawn, you went on to bigger and brighter things. And, and a lot of those guys are still, are still doing that. And it's helped a lot of student athletes. I mean, it's helped us as coaches to get in front of guys that are good players, but it's probably more importantly helped the student athletes find colleges where they think they fit and, and give those guys opportunities to, to get a college education. Thank God you didn't put them on your staff because I wouldn't have a radio partner. No, but the one <laughs> thing I could tell you one thing, though, Coach Dykes, if I if I said this dude can play, he didn't question it. He yeah. was like, okay, cool. I want him. He never questioned it. <laughs> you know, some people know what they're looking at. That is Sonny Dykes, ladies and gentlemen, TCU head coach, the undefeated 6-0, and 8 in the AP poll. TCU. Thanks, Coach. All right, Coach. Hey, Keyshawn, appreciate you guys having me. Great to see y'all, and hopefully see you soon sometime. All right, buddy. Absolutely. Thank you, Coach. All right, y'all take care. Uh huh. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.